All right, well, Phyllis and I want to thank you personally because we weren't here last week. I don't know what you did last week for Veterans Day, but uh, we want to thank you personally for, I think any time is a good, a good time to think about it. And, uh, but we're here to praise the King of Veterans, the one who laid down his life for humanity, and not just the freest physically, but the freest spiritually. So we just want to thank the Lord tonight. Why don't we all stand up? Join us in song, clap your hands, snap your feet. Through you the blind will see.
Lord, a place to come and worship you.
ladies and gentlemen, oh, go back one second, please, sweetie. Go back. Go. You can't go back? All right, then stay there a minute. This is the 242nd week in a row we've had at least there one motorcycle. Oh, there we are. Thank you. It's not too early to start thinking about what we're going to say for 2016. Okay? So you can start turning that around in your brain and we'll be asking. All right, go ahead. 242nd week in a row, we've had at least one motorcycle, and amazing, here we are in the middle of November in Buffalo, New York, we had 11 motorcycles in the parking lot, and uh, my buddy Wayne's in Arizona for a couple weeks, and we miss him, but it's going to be colder there tonight than it is here. So on a count of three, let's say we miss you, Wayne. One, two, three. We miss you, Wayne! All right, good. But it's going to be warmer here tonight than it is where you are. <laughs> We're going down the street to John's Pizza and Subs tonight. We love them and they love us. And uh, December 5th will be our, I don't know what annual breakfast with Santa, but it'll be uh, at Sweeney Ho's Fire Hall. You'll see the prices there. And uh, we, I just bought, Mary talked me into going to Ollie's today. I found this really awesome Lionel train, battery operated. I've never seen a battery operated Lionel train before, which I bought specifically for this. Uh, we try and make the train display a little bigger every year. Uh, but if you can help Friday, December the 4th in the afternoon or evening with train set up, and plus I got a whole lot of gift bags that I got to give to the kids and we need them all stuffed and everything. If you could come and help do that, that'd be great. Or come that morning, um, we're going to be over there. In the, Wayne's going to be in the kitchen. I'm not going to be in the kitchen. But he's going to start uh, doing that probably at eight o'clock or shortly before to be ready to feed people at nine. We could use your help. Uh, if you can help out, we would really appreciate it, okay? And going along with uh, raising money for the Christmas bag, I don't know how the math works out on this, but we had our best Veterans Day fundraiser ever. Uh, all the veterans ate for free and charging $6 a piece for everybody else, for the meatball subs, etc. Now figure this out, at $6 a piece, we raised $511.45. But $6 doesn't go into $511.45. So I'm not sure how that happened, I don't really care. Um, but the meatballs were donated, the rolls were donated, the sauce was donated, the salad was donated. You guys donated the uh, cookies and brownies and desserts and stuff, and we had some left over, so we're selling them back to you tonight. <laughs> Take some and eat them, or, you know, if you want to throw something in the bucket, that's fine. If not, it's no big deal, okay? Uh, but we froze them, and I took them out of the freezer, and I don't think you can freeze them again. So, Okay. I posted this on uh, the Biker Church Facebook page today, and I'm not looking for answers out loud, but I want for those of you who follow that, pay attention to it, I ask this question. If God said to you, you could have whatever you want, what would you ask for? You think God would ever do something like that? Would he ever say to somebody, I will give you whatever you want. Would he ever do that? Has he ever done that? He has. He did that. In 1 Kings 3.5, at Gibeon, the Lord appeared to Solomon during the night in a dream. And God said, ask for whatever you want me to give you. pretty big responsibility, isn't it? I don't think any of us would answer quickly. I don't think we would. We wouldn't want to think about it. And this is says that God's not a genie. This isn't like a genie. You know, you can have one wish. Well, I wish for three more wishes. <laughs> you can't do that. Okay? Whatever you want, I will give you. Let's look at what Solomon's answer was in 1 Kings 3.9. Give your servant a discerning heart to govern your people and to distinguish between right and wrong. For who is able to govern this great people of yours? So what Solomon asked for was wisdom. 
Now, you all know this. There's a difference between wisdom and intelligence. I've known some very smart people who weren't very wise at all. I've known some not so intelligent people who were very wise. I've known some intelligent people who are wise and some people who had neither. Just saying, okay? They're not the same thing. You can be wise and not be the valedictorian of your class, okay? So Solomon says to God, discerning heart. I want wisdom. Now think about this for a minute. Think about the things you pray for and pray about. Now don't get all pious just because you're in church, okay? Answer honestly. Think about the things you pray for and pray about. Think about today. Have you prayed today? I hope so. What have you prayed about? What have you prayed for? Well, if you're a typical American, wait a minute, that just left out like half of you guys, <laughs> including me. 82% of Americans say they pray for their friends and family. 74% say they pray about their own problems. 36% of Americans admitted that they pray for money. 34% say they pray for their enemies, and 41% pray for the people who mistreat them. And the last two, praying for your enemies and for people who mistreat you, those are actually in the New Testament. We're told to do that. Pray for your enemies and pray for those who mistreat you and despitefully use you. But Solomon asked for wisdom. He didn't ask anything for his friends or his family or his own problems or money. And so because of that, this happened. The Lord was pleased that Solomon had asked for this. So God said to him, since you have asked for this and not for long life, or wealth for yourself, nor have asked for the death of your enemies, but for discernment and administering justice. I will do what you've asked. I will give you a wise and discerning heart so that there will never, so there will never have been anyone like you, nor will there ever be. Moreover, I will give you what you have not asked for, both riches and honor so that in your lifetime you will have no equal among kings. Now, to show Solomon's wisdom, you may have heard this story. Two women are brought in front of him and they're fighting over a baby. And the one woman says, this baby is mine. This is my baby and she's trying to take it. And the other woman says, she's a liar. This is my baby, and she's trying to claim it. It's my baby. No, it's my baby. No, it's my baby. So Solomon, because God had given him such wisdom, he said, all right, we'll fix this. We will cut the baby in half. And you may have half, and you may have half. One woman says, seems fair. The other woman says, no, 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 do not kill this baby. Let her have it. So Solomon says, give it to that woman because the real mother would not let her child be killed. Wise, right? Imagine if you could have... You're never going to be as wise as Solomon because God said, nobody ever again will be as wise as you. But imagine if you could have godly wisdom in dealing with your relationships, your situations, problems in your life. And you didn't have to rely on your own street smarts, your own intelligence, your own experience, the advice of your friends, writing into Dear Abby, listening to Dr. Phil. You didn't have to rely on any of that because God has given you wisdom in how to deal with it. Wouldn't that be great? Wouldn't it be great if we could tap into God's wisdom? If only we could get wisdom from God. This is not going to be on the screen. You're going to have to actually grab a red Bible. Open it up to the book of James, which is on page 1196, or at least it should be. 
Actually, I'm at 1195. You're right, 1196. I'm wrong. First mistake I've made since the last one. And my wife knows exactly when that was. When was that? <laughs> You're right, it's 1196. Okay. So I want us to read this out loud together, starting at verse 5 and read through verse 8. Verse 5, 6, 7, and 8, okay? Yeah, chapter 1. If any of you lacks wisdom, he should ask God, who gives generously to all without finding fault, and it will be given to him. But when he asks, he must believe and not doubt, because he who doubts is like the wave of the sea, blown and tossed by the wind. That man should not think he will receive anything from the Lord. He is a double-minded man, unstable in all he does. So, as I say, at least occasionally, when I read God's Word, I'm pretty simple about it. I believe what it says. So if I'm going to believe what it says here, if I lack wisdom and I ask God, He will give it to me and I have to believe He's going to do it and not doubt Him. If I doubt Him, I get nothing. So if I believe Him, He will give it to me. Could you use some godly wisdom in dealing with your boss, your neighbor, your in-laws, your kids, your grandkids, your finances, your health, your spouse, your siblings, the pressures on you, the things you control and the things you can't control. Could you use some wisdom from God? You know? How do I get it? Ask. Can I have some wisdom, please? Pretty simple, isn't it? Ask. Believe you're going to get it. He'll give it to you. I want to look at one other verse. Proverbs 9.10. It's on page 633. This is how you begin. Page 633. Proverbs chapter 9, verse 10. Again, you've got to look in your Bible. It's not going to be on the screen. I'm going to read this myself. You follow me. Proverbs chapter 9, verse 10. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom, and knowledge of the Holy One is understanding. Now, the word fear there does not mean cowering, I'm afraid of you, fear. It means reverence and respect of the Lord. It's the beginning of getting that wisdom you want that you're going to ask for. It is irreverent to use God's name in vain. It is irreverent to use his name as a joke. It is irreverent to do things against this Bible in his name. That is irreverent. <coughs> Reverence of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. Knowledge of the Holy One is understanding. Get to know God. How do I do that? He sent us a textbook. Somebody smarter than me or, or more creative than me. Basic instructions before leaving earth. Right? B-I-B-L-E. So... If I get to know God by reading His Word, if I revere Him, respect Him, I ask Him, He will give me the wisdom I need. I'll never be as wise as Solomon. I don't think I need to be. Let's pray.
I need wisdom, Lord. I need it every day. I have a lot of things to deal with, and I'm not the only one. That are beyond my capabilities and understanding and knowledge. I know I'm not alone. Help me to respect your name, not to use it in vain, not to speak of you disrespectfully, not to do things against your word in your name. And then when I ask for wisdom in whatever I'm dealing with, not to hope I get it, to be, but to believe I get it. That you will give it. It's a supernatural thing. I can't explain it. I can't draw a chart to show how it happens. But dang it, I believe it. And again, I know I'm not the only one. Thank you for this time together. Thank you for the beautiful weather we're enjoying here in the middle of November. And Lord, I pray just as you got us here safe and sound, you get us back home the same way. In Jesus' name, amen. All right, down to...